Hi Jonathan, how are you? Yep, pretty good, cheers, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Um, could you just start off by telling me a bit about yourself? Who is Jonathan Maipon? <laughs> well, um, I'm a guitar teacher in Bradford, primarily. I've played guitar for a lot of years. Um, I now have got the, the, the pleasure of teaching privately from my home. I absolutely love it. It's, it's brilliant, but... If you're talking, but in terms of you know guitar and music, and that's pretty much it. Play guitar. I teach guitar. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of guitar and music going on at this end, basically. Yeah. Very yeah, good. Um, and what exactly made you decide to play guitar? Oh Christ, that was that was that's going back a bit. To the, to the dark ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let um, me see. It was. I always liked the sound of guitar and records. I mean, my mum and dad used to be into. And the Beatles and the Stones and like uh, you know and Don McLean and Ralph McTell and people like that. So guitar music's always been around from an early age. But um, I remember there was one very specific moment one summer. I think it was ninety three. I was thirteen, and we were on holiday for France for about four or five weeks or something like that. And there was two cassettes that I basically listened to for the whole of the holiday. One was um, a, a Jimi Hendrix compilation. It was called The Ultimate Experience. I don't know if it's one of the official ones now. But it had basically just all his hits on. Um, and I listened to that tape. And I actually I wore the tape out and snapped it in four weeks because I listened to it pretty much every day, all day, every day. In the end, it just couldn't take the strain and it just snapped. Um and then the other one was Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits, because I remember hearing it when I was so much younger, um, and then it came around to it again, it had like, you know, Walk of Life and all those tunes on. But then the last tune I actually heard on the album, because it was started just after Money for Nothing, or was Money for Nothing, um, and that riff just made me think, right, that's it, I want to play guitar. So I, I was just banging on about it for the rest of the summer, until um, and my dad gave us one of his old guitars, just to see, because he was kind of testing me to see if I was actually going to do it or not. And I did, I played for like three hours every night for like two months, and so they eventually buckled in and bought me an electric. And the rest kind of goes from there, really. The rest is history. So, um, <laughs> in a sense, yeah. So was teaching guitar, was that, a, was that a natural sort of progression for you? Well, my mum and dad are both teachers. They both taught primary school kids, so, you know, education has always been kind of in the family somewhere. My sister's like a lecturer in... Um, Oh, bloody hell, where is she now? Um, Wigan, or so, so, somewhere really awful like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, you know, somewhere else like that. And so, you know, we're, kind of, we're all kind of in education in some way, but I was determined I didn't want to do something like mum and dad because I just think I am not really don't have the time or patience for teaching little kids. I'll probably get onto that a little bit later on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But no, I mean, teaching didn't really sort of come straight away, you know, I wanted to sort of do the whole rock star thing and, you know, got in a band after when I was at university and, you know, we toured and you know, released a few stuff on our own independently. Um, but then that kind of didn't work out. I ended up kind of stuck in, you know, a, a few pretty shitty jobs. Um, and someone suggested I should do teaching. I was like, nah, you got to be qualified to do a lot of stuff. And, I'm not. And, and then eventually it kind of dawned on me that either I do this or I just spend my life like turning into the other people who I was working with at the time. I was working for Leeds City Council at the time in Refuse Collection. So it wasn't act, it wasn't sort of like, you know, like a, a kind of like a glamorous job, if you know what I mean. It was something that was kind of pretty down and I could see myself going down that way. So I started teaching and eventually, over a long period of time, kind of turned into what it is today. But no, I didn't come naturally to it. I was pretty bad when I first started off. Some might argue I'm pretty bad now, but I have to ask my students about that. <laughs> sure, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Um, um, so, um, so how do you feel that um, teaching guitar has helped your own playing? I think teaching guitar makes you realise a lot of things about the areas that you're lacking in. Um, when I first started teaching, um, all of a sudden I realised, oh, hang on, I'm going to have to brush up on my picking technique. You know, and eventually that lead me, you know, to go and get lessons. And then eventually I found out all the other things that I was lacking in, you know, like little bits of music theory. So it was much easier to see A level music. So my understanding of music was pretty good. You know, I had a good ear, good understanding of theory, a good knowledge of how it applied and stuff. But I'd never really had any proper physical like, lessons in the guitar. One of the first things that I noticed was that my technique was pretty sloppy. 
Uh, and all of a sudden I was like, you know, I was showing students things that I was thinking, hang on, that's not really right. That's not really helping things. So I ended up having to get lessons myself. So in a way, it was a big, motiv- a big motivation, especially in the early days, to just get better because you find, yeah, because you find your areas that you weakest in, and that makes you want to improve a long way. It really, really does, especially when you see students getting better very quickly at a faster rate than you are. It makes you want to practice a lot more. <laughs> yeah. So, um, right, so you've you've just spoke about motivation and how that helps you. Um, to progress as a player when you were taking lessons yourself as you were trying to teach. So um, how important would you say a good teacher is um, in a student's development, being a student and a teacher yourself? Well, I think the old story goes that you you can only lead a a horse to water, you know, and so on and so forth with that old chestnut. Um, And I think that a student has to be in the right frame of mind to want to learn in the first place. I think it's all very well you can give someone the best teacher on the planet, but if if they're not in a, in a state of mind to actually sort of take that knowledge in and to actually use it, they're really not going to get that very far. I mean, yeah, you could argue that it's the responsibility of the teacher to um, to help to inspire people in the first place, but the bottom line is if somebody's head's not on the ball, they're really not going to do very well. But at the end of the day, if somebody is in the right frame of mind to learn and somebody, you know, wants to get there, they'll find a way in one way or the other, but, you know, a teacher is going to shave years off your progress and development because it's like it's like going into a big old forest without a map and going right. I'm going to find this stream in the middle. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. How, I've, I've been up to Glasgow and I've got lost in lots of lots <laughs> of forests down where down where he live. And I, I tell you what, I'd still be wandering around there now, like decades down the line. So it's um, it's kind of essential, really, if you want to get. From A to B, Lo- you read loads of guitar players. Who go, oh yeah, I found my own style by not having lessons and things. But you know what? At the end of the day, the, the, if you play the odds, if you look at the amount of people who just don't take lessons, especially the people you know who, for whatever reason, can't put a lot of time into their practicing and playing on a day by day basis, you know, they're going to be lost. They're going to be lost. I've had people say to me that they've made more progress in two months. With, you know, with me, with lessons that I've been giving, than you know other people than they've made in the last two years through not taking lessons at all. Now I don't think that's sort of any exception. I'm not going. Ooh, look at me! I'm so great! I can do this because I'm sure that happens with a lot of teachers. But at the end of the day, it's like that's why this is why maps were invented to get you from the start of your journey to your finish of your journey. You know, in the quickest possible time. Yeah. You've got to be in the right state of mind to want to learn. I think. Yeah, definitely, and it's a. Uh... Two months to two years is a big difference. Well, the thing is, it's like it's it's not an uncommon thing for tutors. I mean, everyone says it to me, but you know, it's it's just it's, it's just one of those things. It's just a fact. It's just it's just a fact. There's no point in skirting around things and wondering if you should do this and if you're doing this when you could be having someone who's showing you the right way to play, the right way to learn, and the right way to practice. When you've got all those three elements on board, you know that's fine. It's great. I had one student who started September two years ago, uh, and by Christmas, he, like, literally as a, as a beginner, and by Christmas he was doing his first gigs because he put the time in. Now, it, that was kind of like a bit of a fluke. Um, not everybody kind of gets that quickly, but it just demonstrates the power. of If you can have someone to set you on the right path, it's actually going to make a big difference in your playing. Yeah. So um, just a wee bit about the... The format of your lessons, so I understand that you operate both private and group lessons, is that correct? That's right, yes, I do both private and group, and it's, uh, yeah, it seems to be working well. Yeah, and what would you say were the, the pros and cons of maybe only taking one format, maybe only going for group lessons, or only private, or do you think maybe a mix of both is most beneficial for the student? Well, I have a handful of students who do take both, and it's something I'd love to be able to implement right across the board to all the students, if they wanted it, of course. Um, but it's, I mean, there are definitely pros and cons for each one. Private lessons are very, very good for solving the personal problems of students. So, for example, um, if someone's got, you know, someone has been playing for you know, a few years and they've developed a really weird picking technique, let's just say, because right hand or picking hand, sorry, um, is quite common in people who haven't had lessons before picking hand problems. 
you know, the private lessons are great for that because it means you can really focus on the nitty gritty of the students um, to find out what issues affect them. And also, possibly more importantly as well, you can spend a little bit of time actually getting to know the student because I've done this before. I've taught, you know, pretty large groups before where people have been coming every week and I've made the mistake of not getting to know the student right from the start. Um, and I think some of that Tom has said, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, you're not teaching guitar, you're teaching people. And one of the things I found is very important is that you've got to get to know that people. So even if that private lesson, and of course you've got to work on their problems, but you've got to, I think a much, while, a much more good investment of the time is getting to know the person and finding out what makes them tick, finding out, you know, what music they're into, finding out what, you know, what their goals are, finding out what the playing problems have and focusing in on those things so that you can make other lessons more with them more effective. Private lessons on their own, though, are very limited in terms of what you can do. Everybody thinks, oh, private lessons, is a, you know, that's the way it's always been done. You know, that's the way it's going to be done in the future. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think that because I've had students before who, for example, have had lots of private lessons with me, you know, every week. But when they've come to play in front of other people, they've just seized up because they don't have that confidence to play in front of other people because maybe they've just played you know, in front of me and maybe they've just played at home in the bedroom or wherever they practice guitar at home. They haven't had that kind of experience. And so I think playing with, um, and indeed for, other people can help to make you a better player pretty much straight away. Um, and so, yeah, and so with groups, there's a lot more opportunity for teaching people in different ways. There's a lot of, sort of like group work, problem solving, jamming, learning multiple parts of songs, you know, I could go on, but I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm sure you know most of this stuff already. Um, however, the, the downside is, is that because when you're working in a group, like I say, you don't necessarily have the time to focus in on individual problems. So some element of private lesson in there is good. Um, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, but that, that's kind of a little tough to implement. It's kind of like a statistical nightmare. And the more students that you get, the more difficult that's going to be. So anybody who's wanted to start it off, I would say, even if you've got like five students, start implementing some kind of multiple format thing now so that you know how it's going to be done later. Because I'll tell you what, if you've got like 60 students like I have at the moment, it's going to be a little more tricky in order to get there. Whereas if you can build it into your, your teaching model now, it's going to be a lot more easier to implement later on, or at least keep implemented later on. Yeah. Um, so um, there's, there's lots of... Uh, just kind of moving away from the, the lessons themselves. Uh, there's lots of good and bad information um, that you can find on the internet. So, what are your views on, you know, the YouTube sort of generation who are kind of using the internet as a replacement for a good guitar teacher? And I've um, I've been on forums and I have read people who have basically said, um, as advice, you know, you don't need a guitar teacher because you can get everything you need on YouTube. I, I don't think that's I. I think that statement's half right. I mean, yes, you can get everything that you need on YouTube, but when you're connected to YouTube, and how many people use YouTube these days? It must be a lot. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> exactly, yeah. B billions of people use YouTube. Um, and so potentially, you've got billions of people. Each, each person is giving you advice as to what you should do. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to really even begin to guess at the, um, the figures for the guitar playing community. But, you know, th that's a lot of conflicting opinions. I mean, alternate picking versus economy picking, having your thumb over the top of the neck versus having your thumb on the bottom of the neck. You know, practicing with your guitar on your right leg versus practicing your guitar resting on your left leg. I mean, there is just three examples of conflicting opinions that are just going to send people's heads, heads in a tiz. And in addition... Anybody can upload stuff there. So it doesn't even have to be right in order to be on YouTube. You know, somebody can upload any old crap. And, you know, and if it's, if it's believable enough, if there's a strong enough statement behind it, then people will start believing it. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's something for, to, to be very wary of. I say to students, do go on YouTube and go there and get inspired and get fired up by different people. But if you see somebody who's trying to tell you to learn things in one way, well, think about this. Um, how do you know that person's right? Do you know that person? Or is it just some guy on the other side of the world, you know, 
claiming to be a guitar god. Be sure if it's coming from a reputable source, you know, if if Steve Vai puts something up on YouTube or Joe Satriani puts something on YouTube, you know, you sit up and you pay attention because those are the kind of guys who know what they're talking about. You know, I think there's, there's some excellent tutorials I suppose, and I think for that reason it can be a great resource. But for someone who doesn't have the reputation of doing what they're, you know, of, of teaching people, then I'd be a little bit wary about believing that advice because, um, I don't know, if it looks like shit, it smells like shit, then, <laughs> you, know, you know, you can finish that sentence yourself. Yeah, it will be shit. Mm. Um, so I think it's game that's like an issue of quality control, really, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Exactly, it's the same with everything, but it's like a, it's just like a big public forum where people put videos up. I mean, I'm sure you know, like, um, certain sites that will go mention, and go and mention at the moment, and just to, um, to see, you know, people trolling people and people just going on there to make people feel bad about their playing and give, and, you know, to bash down people who are trying to give good advice. Um, and there's no kind of need for that. It's the same on YouTube. It's, um, it can be a useful place, but it can also be a dangerous place to be for somebody who's just starting with guitar and, um, and learning and is quite impressionable to things that are maybe put put forward in a in a charismatic way, but don't necessarily have the um, the kind of skill to back it up and the expertise and knowledge. I, 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 I'm saying to students, just be very very wary about what you watch. Good advice. So, um, if you could only give one piece of advice to students, what would it be? Learning guitar isn't about sitting in a room with me for an hour every week. Um, there are so many ways to get inspired. I think that um, one of the things you should look for is to just get involved with music full stop. If you're going to learn guitar, it's not about being with a guitar tutor. It's about learning guitar in as many different ways as possible. So... Hang out with friends, you know, find guitar players who are better than you and spend as much time around them as possible. Um, you know, play in bands, you know, get involved in writing, get involved in music, um, at your school. If that's, you know, if that's something, you know, that your school's got a good music department, if the kids are younger and you can do that, get involved in music outside of you, but all that, go along to jam sessions, even if it's just to watch, you can still see, you know, some, so some pretty decent players, you know, going on to like, you know, open mic nights and things like that. Get involved in any extra classes, pester your teacher to put on master classes and jam classes and things like that. Um, it's, it's, there's a whole, so many opportunities out there. That it just seems a shame that the only point of learning that some people have is to actually um, is to actually just put this on for an hour every week. You know what? Someone shows me ACDC licks. You know, there's, there's a bit more there's a bit more to learning guitar than that. It seems. Yeah. Um, now you're mentioning um, master classes, and uh, I understand and obviously I've attended um, the master classes in the past. Um, but I'm just um, was reading about you had completed a master class um, at Anthony Rainer's uh, guitar school in Belgium. Um, so how did that go? It went pretty well. I mean, this is I mean, what you're referring to is um, the fact that I put on master classes for my students and I get um, other teachers in and other music professionals in to do things. This was actually me doing this one, and it was yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was good to go over to uh, to Ostend and hang out with Anthony and uh, Joseph for. For, for a little bit more, you know, the sun was out, the beer was cheap, we were camping right next to the beach, what can we say? But the actual masterclass itself was, um, it, it was really, really good, it was a very good experience, um, doing this kind of thing to, you know, a bunch of guys I've just never met before, I mean, this is the first actual masterclass that I've done that wasn't to my students, um, and so this one, I wasn't too quite sure what to expect, but it did go very, very well and came away with some good ideas for how I could improve things and got some great feedback from the session as well. Yeah, Anthony's doing a good job over there. I'm glad to hear that. It sounds, sounds like a good experience. Yeah. So um, just uh, I'll almost let you go shortly, but um, no, I, I was just um, reading about your kind of a relationship with VPAX and I was just interested as to what exactly the relationship was. Is this just a, is it a product that you've enjoyed and you've thought, right, now I want to kind of endorse this product or how did you come across VPEX? 
<laughs> well, before I go any further, I've got your two picks here. They just arrived just before I went to Belgium, so I need to pop them in the post for you. So I apologise about not getting those off to you, don't I promise that's... That's no problem at all. I'm looking forward to trying them. They're good. They're good picks. I mean, I was... Uh, I, I didn't actually use picks for years. I used metal thumb picks because I grew up learning lots of Martin Offler style stuff, and he, of course, uses his fingers and his thumb, and I kind of wanted to use a thumb pick because it kind of allowed the best of both worlds. Um, so getting back into plectrums, um, I just found myself my plectrums were getting thicker and thicker and bigger and bigger. And I was ended up using the, uh, the Jim Dunlop uh, Jazz Old Text picks, which are quite nice. And I used them for a while, but um, who, who put me onto V picks? It was Greg, Greg X in London, um, a Polish guitar tutor from Wimbledon. And I think he, he, he might have, I think I came up to do like a master class. You know, he came with Anthony to do one and he left one here. Um, I ended up trying, I thought, oh, this is great, you know really moves around, and so I got um, a couple of VPIC dimensions, because they were most, the most expensive ones on the uh, on the Strings Direct website. I thought, right, I'll have to see what a £10 plectrum actually does. Um, and it was good, but they, I found that they wore down quite quickly. And so um, I was thinking for a while, well, should I use it? Should I use it? So I went back to the, the gym to all text ones, and I used them for a bit longer, but then I started getting shooting pains up my arm. Now, this is worrying, because I actually... I've injured my wrists in the past when I had like a, a computer-based job at the council. I was just be typing stuff all day, and I ended up by injuring my wrists, getting repetitive strain injury. And so the shooting signs of this going back to this plectrum was something I didn't like. So I ended up going back to V picks, and I thought, well, you know, let's do this properly. Let's see what we can do. So I contacted Vinny, um, and heard nothing back from him first. You know about a possible endorsement. So I thought, well, I'll take the bull by the horns here. I'll make a couple of videos. Demonstrating the um, the V pick dimension, I sent them across to Vinny and was like, "Whoa, how are you doing?" And all of a sudden, we're like best buddies. I was like, "Okay, that's great, that's great." But he seems like a really nice chap. I spoke to him personally, um, and he's doing a good job making some great plectrums. I, I I really like them. I think they're they're very comfortable um, because they're so thick. You don't have to hold on to them as tight. So anybody who's had like wrist injury problems like I have in the past, to do well to uh, to check them out. But they are, they are very um, different. They're great products. I enjoy using them. I recommend. I'm, I'm a reseller for them now, anyway. So, I mean, yeah, I recommend people check them out. Yeah, well, I look forward to trying them because there is um, there's something elusive about a ten pound pick that I must try. <laughs> what? I'll sell you one for six pound. Don't get one off strings direct. Oh, give me the shit. <laughs> I sell. Um, I sell them for US prices um, without the massive delivery charge. Yeah, if you, if you want one, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll pop one in the, the parcel because it's been a bit, a bit late sending one up, so I'll send you one up in a, um, when I get around to uh, packaging them all up so you can check them out, a £10 pick is like. <laughs> <laughs> the elixir. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That's good. Well, um, just before we um, finish up, I was just wondering, what does the future hold for the Jonathan Point School of Guitar? Hmm, the future. Well, at the moment I'm looking to get in premises to actually run this one because I mean at the moment I'm running it from home and it's outgrown all my expectations running things from here but in the same way it's kind of outgrown teaching here you know we've got um, you know my wife and son live in this house as well and it's with 60 people coming in and out every week and you can get a little bit busy and a little bit noisy and I fear for my poor neighbours they might ghost they might uh, they might be having a word with environmental health or something like that <laughs> So I've got um, I've got an eight um, basically waiting for planning permission on an eight hundred square foot premises that I'm going to divide up into some teaching rooms. So me and another guitar teacher I know we're going to start running things together. Uh, and also I've got a drum teacher friend of mine interested as well. So the plans are is to get that up and going as soon as possible, and then just expand and build the business, create some new opportunities for students to learn. And then um, just basically take things to the next level. We're going to have more master classes. We've got um, we've got Chris Eaton, the uh, guy who teaches slide from Guildford, who's absolutely amazing. Plays with a guy called Ian Parker. We've got him coming to do a master class. We've got like a slide guitar mini course going into there. We've got some recording courses teaching students how to use Ableton. We've got a guy called Nick Abel who plays with Ravi Shankar who's coming to do a master class in the new year. We've got Chris Basinger who works as a Line 6 demonstrator coming to do a master class in February. Hopefully we might have Joseph Pesser again coming back. Um, and then of course, you know, 
we can just keep building on things and making things better and um, you know, continue working our way to the top. Very good. I wish you the best of luck with that. Oh, thank you, Andy. Um, well, thanks very much for your time, Jonathan. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And you have answered the questions very suitably. Well, thank you very much. I hope things go well with you with your teaching as well. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, Jonathan. Excellent. Take care, Andy. Speak to you soon. Speak soon, Jonathan. Bye.